Hello and welcome to my unwrapping and first look at the Warhammer 40,000 Codex Imperial Knights 8th edition. I understand this is the video you've all been waiting for ever since a couple of other YouTubers uh, gave you first looks of the Codex uh, a week or two ago, courtesy of Games Workshop. Um, I don't <laughs> work like that. I get it the same time as everyone else uh, and I have to pay for it. Um, and this is it. One of these will set you back, I think it's £25, which isn't too bad uh, because it's over 100 and over 100 pages. I think it's like 120 pages or so. Um, so, uh, but there might be some issues getting in. So it's a nice, thick, thick one, I think. I think it's quite a thick one. Uh, not a huge fan of the front cover art, it's just a 7th edition sort of cover art, isn't it? Um, which is what they seem to have been doing a lot with uh, these codexes. Uh, although the Custodes one's pretty, pretty nice, I just wish that they probably put a Castellan on, on or, or something like that, because I like the new uh, artwork for Castellan. Okay, so just move the uh, uh, camera a little bit, uh, just, just to get the whole book in, in place. So. Um, what do you get? So, yeah, printed uh, by Imojo in China, like all their books and their, their scenery. Um, you get uh, your detailed account of night worlds, colour schemes and heraldry, uh, comprehensive range of data sheets, I think that means 12 or 10, um, and so on. So there's some pictures of them with the new one there uh, and the Armager Wargraves as well. No Helverins in that picture, but there we go. Um, so Hector Rex, I think, um, also Hector in his knight called Canis Rex, is uh, in here, so we, we're going to have a little look at that. Um, so, yeah, Imperial Knights Honor through Fealty. Oh, a little preview there. It will set you back exactly 120 pages, so excellent. Um, introduction, welcome, noble pilot to Codex Imperial Knights. Okay, so you've got the introduction, you get this lovely brand new uh, artwork um, with armagers slicing uh, little um, <coughs> nurglings, well not nurglings but some kind of plague bearers apart. This uh, Imperial Knight pilot has unfortunately had to um, ditch his uh, knight and is now going to be completely savaged by these um, very ugly, uh, horrible looking um, Slaneshi demonettes, that's the one. Uh, and then there's this uh, there's this greater demon going head to head with another imperial knight, and this valiant here, uh, knight valiant, is uh, probably just harpooned um, one of these big slanesh uh, greater demons, um, and is now looking for another target, or maybe it's just looking quite cool. But a uh, lovely bit of artwork there. Uh, warriors of the noble houses, um, lots of pictures and artwork here. Looks fantastic. Um, that looks incredible that bit of artwork a legacy of honor the omnisize boon so a nice uh, feature with the uh, mechanicus um imperial knights uh, night worlds of the imperium so that's very interesting you've got metallica there and triplex four questa imperialis worlds questa mechanicus worlds uh, knights at war structure of questa imperialis great house questa imperialis heraldry House Turin. And then some specific knights for House Turin. House Cadmus, the green ones. House Griffith, the bone colour ones or white ones. House Hawk Shroud, the yellow ones. Morton, the black, red and yellow ones. Questa Mechanicus Heraldry. By the way, my, my Imperial Knights don't really sit in a house in terms of colour, they're just black and gold. Um, so, and that's just to match my, Imperial, my uh, Titans anyway. House Raven, for Mechanicus. Uh, house Fulker. House Tyrannis. House Crast. And Free Blades. You've got Kalina, Maxus, the Stormwalker. That's pretty decent that they've put in the new knights in these uh, free blades as well. Amaranthine, the Obsidian Knight. Gerantius, the Green Knight. Uh, oh, 
and then you've got a couple of you've got an armature one there auric arachnus the white warden and then you've got a tapestry of glory so you've got a nice sort of timeline there of the knightly houses you've got quite an epic bit of artwork there from a few years ago with the town armager warglaives armager helverin so lovely bit of sections here uh, with the forces going through them in detail knights errant which is your standard one with the um, thermal cannon a paladin you got a warden there a gallant crusader lovely bit of artwork and please reuse that one uh, knight's perceptor no picture though shame but the canis rex um with sir hector it's going to be one kit um it's a shame it's not out for pre-order this week might not even be out for pre-order next week either but you can either make a knight's preceptor or canis rex with this one kit I'm thinking it's going to be £100. It could be a little bit more though. We'll see. Knights Castellan, the new one. Valiant, another new one. Lovely bit of artworks there for both of those. L love all that energy and things around that thunder coil. Uh, Harpoon even. Completely destroyed a, my Nurgle Rhino there. I stomping on him. Uh, in Adamant Clad. Interesting pose for that one. It's a nice little, uh, <clears throat> this is a heavy metal kind of showcase. For the knights. Fantastic. Now, Knights of House Raven. And some free blades. I love that colour. Lovely bit of scenery as well. And there is uh, Sir Hector. Clad in his half armoured body glove. Oh, I'd love a body glove. And then he's enthroned. He's got an awesome ha looking helmet, hasn't he? Um, Gods of War. So this is like a little, I want to say, start collecting. <laughs> They'll never have a blooming start collecting set. Um, but this is uh, kind of your, your normal sort of uh, starting set for a Imperial Knights army, I would have thought. A, a cast, a Valiant, an Armager, and a Knight. But obviously you'd, you'd have two um, Armagers. And then a much bigger force with uh, a Preceptor and uh, two Halverins and uh, two Armagers and uh, three Knights this time. And then a Castellan as well, so a, a bit bigger. That's probably my kind of force. I mean, I've definitely got three knights. I've got five knights, a Castellan and a Valiant. I'll definitely get Hector, and I've got four Armagers. But yeah, I might, I might get the other two, thinking about it. A knightly host. So here we go. So you've got, uh, straight away, they're all Lords of War, obviously. Um, you've got Armager, Helverins, uh, then you've got the Warglaives. So the Helverins uh, power points cost of a nine, same as the Warglaives, but the Warglaives do have that 30 inch um, strength eight melter kind of weapon and their Reaper Chain Cleaver now has this sweep strike instead of just a normal strike, which is a strength 12 weapon. Um, you get two hit rolls instead uh, for each attack. And if they've got four attacks, that's eight there, right there, eight. So that's gonna help with them not being bogged down by silly little infantry and things. Um, so they're the armages. Then you get a Knight Preceptor, which are a power points cost of a 23. Um, it's got this Laz Impulsor weapon. How does it compare to a Knight Paladin? Well, same power points cost, same number of runes, same toughness, things like that. Uh, same Iron Shield, but it's got a, a Mentor uh, special rule. So the, the main weapon that it has to have is this uh, Laz Impulsor, um, which is quite a short range weapon. It's, you know, 36 inch range for strength six or 18 inch range uh, for uh, strength 12. Um, so you, you're doing away with like a, a battle cannon um, for the Paladin, which is um, 72 inch range, or you're doing away with, with the Errant, which has that 36 inch range um, thermal cannon. Then you've got a Knight Gallant, uh, which just has the Reaper Chainsword and the Thunderstrike Gauntlet. Then you've got the Warden, um, which has the Reaper Chainsword and Avenger Gatling Cannon. 
then the Crusader, which is all out a shooty uh, Imperial Knight. Then you've got Canis Rex, so a completely separate um, entry from the Preceptor. Same power points cost as the Preceptor, though power points cost of the 23. Um, and he's got a couple of weapons here. He's got Super Heavy Walker Canis Rex, um, and then Sir Hector. There's some extra little rules there, um, and he's got um, Freedom's Hand, uh, which is which is the fist. So instead of the Preceptor having the um, Reaper Chainsword, he's got this Freedom's Hand, uh, which is doubles his strength to 16, AP minus 4, 2d6 damage, and it's got some extra little abilities, which I'll go through in the uh, review of him, um, if I don't in the review of this codex. Then you're on to the big ones, the, the Knight Castellan. It's a power points cost of a 30, movement of 10 inch, and it's got the Plasma Decima Decimator, which is a 48 inch range, Plasma Cannon basically, and the Volcano Lance, which is 80 inches, which is, yeah, probably one of the longest range weapons in 40K now. Interesting to know that the Shieldbreaker missiles are 48 inch range too, and they are strength 10. So they're not to be overlooked. They may look quite, not very intimidating, but they're pretty decent. They can ignore uh, invulnerable saves too, so be careful. Uh, Knight Valiant as well. Knight Valiant uh, on the next page. Uh, same power points cost as a 30, but it's got this Thundercoil Harpoon, which is strength 16 weapon there, uh, with damage of 10 and minus 6 AP. Ridiculous. Um, and it's got that 18 inch um, strength 7 3d6 heavy flamer essentially. And then you've got a fortification, which is a power points cost of a four, so I'm pleased that they've got this in the codex as well. I was sort of expecting it, um, but it's nice to see it in colour with a picture of it. And this is what they should do. Games Workshop really should do this. I would prefer the picture to be at the top, but hey, I'm pleased that they're doing that. Even even that's quite good to have Canis Rex, you know, well, to have Sir Hector there and to have the different Crusaders. So either they're listening to me, <laughs> well, I must be paranoid, but you know, I much prefer to have a picture of the unit or the knight or whatever it is on the same page of the rules. It just makes so much sense, even if they bodge it up and do it the opposite way, even if they, if they have to mix it up and go, okay, here's a warden, there's a picture of a warden, here's a crusader, here's a picture of a crusader. Much prefer that. You know, the codex can't get any better than that, I, I think anyway, in my view. Anyway, back to the Sacristan Forge Shrine because I went off on a tangent. That's it then. Um, so you've then got knightly armament, so it goes through all of the really cool weapons and even shows you pictures of the weapons, which is awesome because if you're building your knights and things, you want to know what kind of weapons go on what knight. Um, then you've got an a amazing picture of some kind of battle here uh, against orcs. Uh, and all these brand new orc models, as you can see, <laughs> um, which will be released in a few months' time. No, I don't think there are any new ones there. They're all quite old ones. But I do love their um, free, um, you know, their, their separate individual cannons that the orcs have got. And the flyers and, you know, Morkonauts and things are awesome. So there you go. That's a nice little battle scene. Uh, Might of the Night Worlds. Uh, so you've got Night Lances, Free Blades, Household Traditions, and it goes on to uh, some of the Household Traditions there. You've got all the stratagems. There's some really nice stratagems here. Probably worth you getting the, the cards as well for these. Um, I found that there are some very nice ones. Um, Warlord Traits. And then you get uh, Household Warlord Traits. Heirlooms of the Noble Houses. Um, you get Paragon Gauntlet, and you get the Ravager uh, melee weapon, which is plus eight strength, you get a judgment weapon, which is rocket pod, which is ridiculous. So there's some nice heirlooms there if you wanna just buff out your Imperial Knights too. Um, like two full pages of the heirlooms, and it's just incredible. Um, and then, uh, free blade qualities and burdens. Interesting. Uh, points values. So Canis Rex will set you about 450 points. A Castellan is 510 points. Probably the most expensive thing there. Well, the Valiant is 500. You know, a rapid fire battle cannon is 100 points. Thermal cannon is 76. Laz Impulse is free. Plasma Decimate is free. Thermal Spear is free. Thundercall Harpoon is free. Volcano Lance is free. Um, Conflagration cannon is free. So it's all kind of included in the cost of the, the, the big um, units. So you, you're packing 500 points each one of these. So we're almost at. Warhound um, Titan territory because uh, I think a Warhound Titan is about 700 points or so. 
I know that a Thunderhawk was about 700 points, but there you go, that's all the points values. And then finally you get the tactical objectives too. So that is my first look at this very thick uh, codex, 120 pages. It's, it's, a, it's now been upgraded and uh, promoted to a full size codex, 120 pages, finally. It's taken three codexes, but I remember the first one that only had two data sheets in it. Um, I think it was only two. And then the next one had, I think, five. And now this one has um, a good deal more. And um, things can only get better with this uh, and adding more and, and all, all the rest of it. But we will see. We will see. Um, so, yeah, lovely codex. Really chuffed with this. Um, you know, definitely want to have a look at this and read it and go through it and be able to bring you a review at some point soon. Thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching. The Emperor Protects.